Hey guys, Paul here with Patek. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new track mat feature in Camtasia 2022. We're going to look at how to use arbitrary shapes or annotations or the shapes that are found in annotations in Camtasia. And we'll also take a quick look at the library feature towards the end. But this is uh, track mats and masking and green screen is a hugely powerful feature in Camtasia. Let's jump in and take a look. So let's take a look at an example of where you might use an arbitrary track mat. And then I'll show you an example of where you, you don't need it and then why you might need it. So let's jump in. And so what you can see on the screen here is a capture of yours truly. And basically what I'm gonna do is select this. I'm gonna to come to visual effects and I'm gonna drag this down. Like I'm gonna knock out the color here for a green screen. Um, grab the pen tool, come over here, click, boom. Okay, so I got a little bit of green fringing left over here. So I can bump the tolerance up uh, to get rid of that. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. Um, let's just pull this down here, up here a little bit. And then the next thing that I would do is probably use the crop tool and pull this arm in and pull this side in here. And then I can bring my whatever I'm going to use uh, to do the heaven behind the green screen, I can I can pull that in and and that's great. But there's times when it just doesn't go quite that easy. So let's back up here and let's delete this uh, remove a color option here. And I'll show you an example of what you might want to do. Um, Let's grab the triangle tool and we'll pull that down and stretch it out. And let's pull this over. So what I'm trying to do is create a shape that's gonna more closely mask out myself so that it's usually we call it a garbage mask when you're doing green screen. And, and that's really what we're doing is creating a mask so that we're only gonna have visible what's inside the mask. And so if I pull this up like this, that's pretty good. That gets rid of most of it. But if I bring down another shape, like so, and drag that across, and I pull that shape up there, pull this across, pull this down. So now I've got something that covers the whole nine yards. So if I take these two and I put them into a group and then I come to visual effects and I apply the media mat, I think now you get the idea. So it's normally in a program like Adobe Premiere or something like that, you would have a vector-based pen tool where you could draw right around the object and create your mask. But in Camtasia, we're not there yet. So now what I can do is if I click on my actual media file, so, uh, oh, I have to drag down my, whoops, drag down my remove a color. And then I can just click on the eyedropper here and we'll come over and get rid of the color. And that's not too bad. Um, I'm at 10% tolerance. So we'll knock that down a little bit. And then you can still see a little bit of the, uh, you know, just so that you know, I mean, this green screen is probably a foot and a half behind me, not even that. So it's pretty remarkable. And the other thing to know is that this is not a webcam. This is a Sony a6000 that I'm looking into right now. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're, you're thinking, geez, I can't do this with my webcam. You can do it with your webcam. Um, it's just not as refined. Uh, so yeah, so I would I bumped up the tolerance here a little bit and now what I'm going to do is just take the hue up a little bit And you just have to be careful with the hue because things will start to get pink pretty quick Yeah, right in about there 25% should be good and now I can come over and uh, The only thing you have to watch out for here is that if you're going to do any resizing You have to resize them together. So you have to resize your uh, annotation ob objects, the boxes that you made, um, and your video clip. And then just drag them down like so. And this is a good example of where you'd use this, right? If you want to have like your talking head in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, uh, here you go. Okay, in this next segment, what we're going to do is 
Let's say that you want to have picture in picture in bottom right or bottom left hand corner of your screen, but you'd like to have it in kind of a fancy shape. Well, you can use annotation shapes and the media mat function to do that. So let's take a look and see how we can do that. If I scroll over here, I've got a random clip. I took the audio out of this just for uh, to make things a little bit easier to build this. But really what we want to do is you've got a video clip and you want to mask out the background. You're going to play overlay it over top of another clip. And so we're going to select annotations and I'm going to drag a couple of shapes onto the screen like so. There's our circle and if I hold the shift key, pull the circle out like so. I've got it roughly to the shape that I want and I'm going to pull down this rectangular shape here. We'll drag this over and what I'm going to do is drag it into the corner and I'm going to bring the, bring the white shape into the corner. And I'll just drag this over. I saw this shape on Dotto Tech and I thought it was kind of cool. Shh, won't tell anybody. <laughs> okay, so this needs to come over. Just nudge it a sec, uh, slightly here. I think this needs to come the other way. Ah, that's close enough for demonstration purposes, I guess. We'll bring this down a bit. And then select the two shapes like so. And I'm going to copy them. Control C, con uh, Control V. Let's see, control C, control V, and I'm just gonna move that shape out of the way. We're gonna use that for a little bit later. So I'm gonna come back and select these two shapes. I'm gonna group them. And once I've got them grouped, I'm gonna to come to visual effects and media mat. I'm gonna drag the media mat down onto my shapes. And now you can see that your, your video is actually masked out, which is great, that's what we want. Now I'm going to select both my lower video clip and the shapes clip. I'm going to right click again. I'm going to group them together. Now I can move them around, reshape them and really uh, do some serious manipulation with them. So if I take the cropping tool, I can do this kind of thing. I can crop this. So this is going to be an example of picture in picture talking over another video or something like that. Um, so we we'll just leave this here for the moment. And what I want to do now is kind of put a nice decorative outline around this uh, shape. So what we'll do is I'll bring the shape that I created before, which which pretty much should be a clone of what was there. Uh, the only thing is I've got to change that yellow to a white color. And let's just make this hit enter. There we go. Okay, so now if I group these two shapes together, like so, I can come up here and resize them. And so I can pull my masked video and then click on the shapes, hold down the shift key, and we get kind of a interesting, whoops, I have to uh, put both of these together. There we go, the two groups. And we'll just hit group again, like so. And now I can go over to media. I can drag down my media clip uh, like this. And if I play this. Okay, so now let's say this is one of those times where you want to put your picture in picture in, inside a particular shape. And, can... and I can come up. I can click on this. If I find that it's a little bit too big and I want it a little smaller, I want to move it out of the corner a little bit and have it uh, running Tangent like so. 2022 has a pretty slick trick for doing. So it's a really cool way to enhance a picture-in-picture -picture effect um, that, I don't know, it just adds that extra little touch to your videos. So I really think I'd be remiss if I didn't cover this next tip with you. So if you want to look at this as a pro tip or if you're new to Camtasia and you're not familiar with the library feature, this is huge. So what I've done is I'll just move the uh, cursor over here and I took a couple of minutes after finishing the last clip and I went in and I did a, a much nicer teardrop here. I made sure the border was, you know, even and uh, just, you know, really fine tuned it a little bit. And if you look at the clip here, if we open it up, you can see that I've got the teardrop. If I open this up, you can see the group. 
so what I've done is uh, let me move this screen up here a little bit for you so you can see so this shape and this one is the actual start of the teardrop okay so if I close that then if you can see this little uh, show effects there's the media mat so I've already applied it to the initial shape and then if I close this I created the duplicate shape to go underneath it which gives it the white outline uh, in the background and so the beauty of what I've done is once you have this all completed on uh, the screen you can simply come over and you can click on your library assets and you can see here it says teardrop media mat um, so I can drag this out and let's just move this over so you can see this here So now I've got two teardrop media mats. I just called it teardrop because it looks like a teardrop shape to me. But essentially what I've done is I've created the, this one here is the one I pulled out of the library. So if I get rid of this, if I, if I take, click on this and drag it down, it would give me a duplicate. So let's just do that just so you can see. So the bottom line here is that if you go to all the trouble to make a nice teardrop shape, um, you can reuse it over and over and over again. And to reuse it, all you have to do is open it up and open up the group until you see your clip. And then here you can simply take your clip out and slide in another one. And so it just saves you a lot of work in the future. And there's a few programs like Flash used to have the library. I think Adobe Premiere has the library. A lot of video production programs have a library feature, but a lot of people don't really uh, take advantage of it. And so if you're making pieces of artwork like this, you want to be able to reuse them over and over again. You know, in this case, it's a, it's a left side teardrop. Maybe you want to make one for the right side. And then you've got it handy and you can reshape it and resize it time and time again and just save yourself a ton of time. I don't know about you guys, but in Camtasia 2022, track mats, annotations, you know, green screen, it's really coming into its own. Uh, the program is developing nicely. Now we've got all these features um, or a lot of nice new features that are only found in Premiere and, other, you know, some of these other high end programs. And, you know, for developing training content, uh, Camtasia is unbeatable because all those other programs don't capture your screen. Um, you know, you can't do overdubs um, the way you can in Camtasia. You can't record your PowerPoint presentations. So for me, this is just a win-win for everyone. And that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you found this video useful, please hit the subscribe and like buttons and smash the notification bell and you'll get notified when uh, more content comes available. And thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. See ya.